I'm very happy for that chance that Abuna Yohanan Abuna Moros gave me to be with you, to take uh, the blessings of St. Mary and your blessings. Uh, thank you for allowing me to take these blessings. And I'm uh, very happy to see uh, also some of the young people here attending the Pascha. I know you have a school tomorrow, and yet to, you managed to finish your homework early and come to the Pascha. That's wonderful to see that uh, enthusiasm and commitment to the church and attending the Pascha. It's, uh, it's a great blessing. I'm so proud of you guys. God bless. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Have you, have you ever bought something? Kind of expensive. And then after you went home, a machine or something. And after you went home and you tried it and it didn't work. She read it. How frustrating is that? It's very frustrating. Especially nowadays when you buy something and they say in the box it's going to take you two hours to assemble it and it takes you like two weekends to finish it. And the manual is half a Chinese and half English. And it takes you hours to put it together. And imagine after this effort and putting it together, it's not working. You know, I had uh, like two years ago or something, our uh, dishwasher at home broke down. So I had to get a new one. So we ordered a new one and then I uh, called the technician and he came. And we, I mean, my wife's so excited about the new dishwasher. <laughs> we went shopping for a dishwasher and she was so excited about it. Took it out of the box and put it and the guy came and spent like two hours trying to put it together. And he put it together and then yeah, and he, um, I thought my job was done. <laughs> so I went down the stairs in the basement. I have a little office in the basement, just a little. We have a two-story house, and I have a little corner in the basement. That's my office. That's where I live most of the time. <laughs> but again, we were so excited that I finished my job as a husband. <laughs> I got the dishwasher, and a guy came and installed the dishwasher. And then my wife just put the dishes in the dishwasher. The guy came and put it together and tested it. We see it running and everything is good, so he left. So after a while, so my wife started taking the dishes, the dishes, the dirty dishes, and put it in the dishwasher, stack them up. Okay, and I went to the basement and she ran the dishwasher. And what she usually does is just, she runs the dishwasher, and then she goes to check her email. That's what she usually does. And I don't know the connection between a dishwasher and the email, but that's my wife. Okay, so <clears throat> she did that. And then um, I was just reading some books in the basement. And after a while, I found her coming down to the basement to my office. And immediately I know there's something wrong. <laughs> she comes down to my office, not very often. So she came and said, uh, what's going on? So, you know, as a wise husband, <laughs> I smiled <laughs> and I said, what's going on? She said, um, the kitchen is full of bubbles. <laughs> so I said, okay, so the, we have a dishwasher and a bubble machine. <laughs> so she looked at me and said, I don't know what's going on, but the kitchen is full of water and bubbles. <laughs> Okay, so I stopped smiling, <laughs> and I went upstairs, and of course it was full of water. So, okay, we started cleaning the, you know, the basement, I, so I started blaming her. You don't know how to run the dishwasher, you didn't read the manual, you should have read it first. Okay, there's an instructions, and that's why we have a manual for things, so you have to follow it exactly as it is. Okay, so, play the smart. <laughs> Okay, and then I took the dishwasher, the dishes out, and I started reading the manuals and trying to run it. And so I said, okay, I'm going to run it well. See, watch and learn <laughs> lesson. So I ran the dishwasher. And again, after 15 minutes, 
the kitchen is full of bubbles again <laughs> and water. <laughs> so we got so frustrated. <laughs> and then, okay, now we started realizing that there is something is wrong with the dishwasher. It's not us, <laughs> it's not her or me, it's something is wrong with the dishwasher. So again, so we started reading on the internet and trying to figure out what the guy did and, you know, after like three weeks of reading, we figured that out. And it was the guy missed some of the clips in there, so we fixed it. Anyway, but the thing is, you know, we got the dishwasher, okay, we spent the money on it, we got it, took me, you know, we had to, you know, fold the seats in the car and just put it in there and get someone to help me. And when I get the house, I had to call my neighbor to come and help me take it inside the house, take the boxes and fold it and call the guy to come and install it and pay the installer and then we put it. And then it's not working. It's very frustrating. And you can't take it back because you put it. <laughs> and the effort and the, and the money and the time and the energy and looking for the right installer and just calling up and scheduling it and trying to fix it. Very frustrating, very frustrating. You get something, you expect it to work. And you want it to work. That's why we got it, because you really need it. And you want it to work. And it didn't work. It didn't get you the results that you really want. I want you to imagine how God feels about us when He created us in His image and bought us with a price, very expensive price. And we don't do His will. And we don't bear the fruits that He wants us to bear. I want you to think about that for a moment. How God feels about that. He wants to bear fruit in our life. And we don't do it. The Gospel of the third hour in the morning is about the fig tree. And this is one of the theme of today, one of the points of the um, Monday of the Pascha, is the fruitful life. God expecting us to have a fruit. It's in the Gospel of St. Mark. This story of the fig tree is mentioned in Mark 11:11. 11, 11. It's very easy to remember. In Matthew 21:21, 21, 21. very easy to remember. But this, the Lord Jesus Christ was going through and he saw, <clears throat> he went out of uh, Bethany with the twelve. And now the next day when he had come out of Bethany, he was hungry. Hungry. You don't hear that from the Lord Jesus Christ. Hungry. He, the one that fed the five thousand and the four thousands and healed them and the devil tried to tempt him to turn the stone into bread and he refused now he's hungry he was hungry and then and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves he went to see it perhaps he would find something on it when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. Nothing but leaves. Does that sound familiar to us sometimes? Yani, would Christ, when he come and ask us about good fruits in our life, will he find fruits or find just leaves? He was hungry, but wasn't hungry physically. He was hungry to see fruits in us. The, the tree in itself resembles human beings, men in general. 
And God is expecting us to have fruit. And I don't think this is too much of expectation from God. You see? God is expecting us to have fruit. Same thing like the dishwasher. You bought it and it's expensive. You put the effort to, to get in it into your house. You want it to work. That's why you got it in the first place. And God created us and died on the cross for us. He bought us with a price, very expensive price, his blood. So he wants fruit. He wants fruit. He paid the price already, too much. Unbearable price. He wants fruit. That tree is you and me. And of course, the Lord Jesus Christ, yani, yani, the tree resembles two things. First, the Israelites, the people who chose and gave them the law, Moses' law and stuff, and the prophets. And of course, they didn't follow it, they break it, and they didn't have fruit. But also, it resembles every Christian, you and me. And God wants fruit from us. This is God when He created us. He had a plan for us. He had a plan. And we want, He wants us to follow His plan, His directions for our life. He wants to follow it. And He has a purpose, and He wants us to follow that. So the question for you and me today, in the month, the first, the second day of the Pascha, do I have fruits in my life or I, am I fruitfulness? Do, and how, more importantly, how do I measure it? How do I measure if I know if I have fruits or not? And how do I measure it? You know, sometimes we wonder what's wrong with uh, a fruitless tree, a tree that doesn't have fruit, just leaves. Looks nice, right? Some people have trees for, you know, just decoration, landscaping. Looks nice. But what's wrong with a fruitful tree? I and mean, there's a trees for just decorations, for landscaping, but there are fruit tree like a um, strawberry tree or uh, an apple tree or something. It's supposed to have something, fruits. But what if? What's wrong with a tree that's supposed to have fruits and does not have fruit? What's the problem with that? The problem is, when a tree has have leaves only, you know, the leaves takes out of the nutrition of the tree. And the fruit salts. But the leaves only takes out of the nutrition of the tree. And bears nothing. And only benefits itself only benefits itself, the tree. But when the tree has fruits, also have leaves which covers what benefits itself and also have something for others. That's a fruitful tree. And the same thing in our life, when we have only leaves, you know, what's the problem with leaves? Again, sucks out our energy, our strength, we waste our strength and energy that God gave us in what? Sinful laziness, wasting of time, watching TV, internet, chatting, Facebook, all that stuff. Music, fun. Wastes our energy. God given time and talent that God gave us, we waste it on that stuff. So God is asking us, you must have fruit. You can't have just leaves. It's a wasting of energy. Wasting of the talent that I gave you. God gave every one of us talent, gifts. And God wants us to use these gifts for His glory. And when we don't use them for His glory, again, we're wasting energy, like uh, leaves only. It takes out of the energy of the tree, nutrition of the tree, and benefit only itself. God wants us to bear fruits. This is a must. God created us for a plan and we have to fulfill His plan. It's a must. And when we don't fulfill His plan, it's a waste. There's a story about uh, 
a young teenager. <clears throat> he used to live with his parents, and then um, th they had a, a, a tree, a fruit tree, next to the house. So the the yep, the boy, you know, when his dad uh, give him time out and goes to his room, he used to jump from his room from second story on the tree and gets down and go out with his friends. Bad, don't do that. But that's what he used to do. So. This boy used to go out with his friends this way. <clears throat> but one day, his dad said, decided to cut that tree. So the, guy, the, the boy got very angry and upset. OK, what am I going to do now? <laughs> I'm going to be stuck in my room all the time. So he went to his dad, Dad, why do you want to cut the tree? Why don't I get the tree? It's a nice tree. It has, it has, it's, a, it's really nice. You know, in the summer, it, it looks very nice. So his dad said, Again, this is a fruit tree, and uh, you know it's been like three years, and we haven't seen any fruits from it. So I'm just gonna cut it down and get a different one. So Dad, can you wait? Can you do something about it? Maybe you need fertilizer or something. He said, No, no, it's just it's a bad tree. I can tell. So the father class made the decision that he was gonna cut the tree. So the boy didn't know what to do. So he went to his friends and said, What, what are gonna do? So his friends told him, Okay, let's go and buy like 10 pounds of apples from the store, just hang it on a tree. So they did that. So they went at night, he jumped up the tree and then went out to the store, they got uh, like 10 pounds of apple and they started hanging it on the tree. So his dad, next morning, came out of the house and walking by the tree and he saw apples on the tree. He was surprised. And then he ran inside the house to his wife and said, hey wife, come, there is Fruits on a tree. So I smiled, yay, that's wonderful, it's good. It's good that tree has finally it's bearing some fruits. It's so exciting. And the husband told her, no, it's a miracle. So the wife looked at him and said, miracle, why? It's a fruit tree, you're supposed to have fruit. It's a miracle, because this is a bear tree and it has apples on it. <laughs> You see, fake fruits, fake fruits, and God knows that. When we have fake fruits, when we come to church and pretend that we are praying, fake fruits. When we go help someone, and in our heart it's a pride, we won't get the things, the recognition, look good, look like good Christians, but we're helping others, fake fruits. And many of us focus on the fake fruit. Why? Because it's a lot easier to do. It's a lot easier to do. It's a lot easier to get an apple and get on a tree and say, this is an apple tree. That's easy to do that. But make the fruit from itself, the tree brings fruit. It's harder. It's harder. And many of us as Christians, instead of putting the effort and trying to follow the commandments of God and try to discipline ourselves and exercise self-control so we can have fruits in our life, we we'll look for the easy way of bearing fruits. Let's fake it out. Fake it out. And sometimes we become very expert in that. But God is not mocked. God is not mocked. God knows the heart. God knows the heart. <clears throat> in the, uh, in also in the, in, the 11, in the third hour this morning, uh, there, there was a sermon, from, uh, sermon by uh, St. Shinoda the Archimanejite. It says, God did not plant good trees and bad trees in the paradise, but only good trees. He did not plant fruitless trees or trees with bad fruits. Fruitless trees or fruits with bad fruit. And sometimes we wear fruit, but it's bad fruits. But this is not what God wants. Because sometimes also bad fruits, you can't eat it. No one benefits from bad fruits. No one eats it. It's a waste again of energy. When we try to fake it, we waste energy. When we have bad fruits, when we say, okay, look at us, we, we, we try to go to church, we pray, okay, just don't, don't push it, okay, I'm better than this person, this person who don't come to church at all, 
or don't help anyone. I'm helping with Sunday school, or I go to Sunday school, look at this person who doesn't come at all. So we, we're good. We're good. We're good Christians. We're good Christians. And we start comparing ourselves to others so we can look good and feel good about ourselves. Bad fruits. Bad fruits again. God did not create it. Trees with bad fruit. And when the Lord Jesus Christ saw the fig tree that has no fruit, just leaves, he cursed that tree. So he told him it's not going to have any fruits anymore. Although he mentioned that, that uh, it wasn't time for fruits, and some, some sometimes wonder why God cursed the tree that doesn't have fruit. And of course it wasn't the time for that fruit, so why, why is he upset about it? Okay, it's not the time for it. That's not fear. You know, the church father explained it, <clears throat> uh, says that God wants us to show us his power, that he can punish. He wants the, to le- teach his disciple that. But he didn't, you know, all what the Lord Jesus Christ did in his life, helping the sick and raising the dead and feeding the people and helping that. So all of what he did is good. But he never showed them that he can punish. To exercise that curse on a tree. And some of the church father yani, think this is a wonderful and we thank God that he cursed that tree, not a human being. <clears throat> and also by his cross and dying on the cross, he carried the curse of the human being again. But he wanted to show that he can exercise his power and he has the power to punish. And that was a signal also to the Jews, to those who were planning to crucify him that he also has the power to punish them, but he will not use that power. Curse the tree. Show them as an example for them to show them that he has a tree. So this is, again, a fruitless life. A fruitless life. How can... Why, or why is it a fruitless life is bad? Again, for Christian life, if we're just having, just again, a tree, we become, again, uh, in the first hour of the eve of Monday, also from Sirach, the first says, do not disobey the fear of the Lord and do not approach him with a divided mind, the division, just the appearance. And we become, as Christians, we become a, a stumbling block for others. A stumbling block for others. There's a story about um, a guy who was driving his car at night, and he was following the speed limit, walking, driving normally, following all the rules, speed limit. And then there came behind him that lady who was you know, tailgating him, very close to him. And he kept walking, he ignored it, and he just kept driving normally, following the same, the speed limit, the rules, uh, the speed limit, and then just driving back. And then came the next traffic light, and it turned yellow. So the guy decided to stop. But because the lady was too close to him, still getting him, she hit him in the back. And she started uh, yelling and cursing and getting so angry at this guy. He is not watching you. Why don't you move? Why did you stop? You could have just made it. She got so angry and frustrated. started chatting in the car and talking to himself. What have you done? And then as she was yelling and cursing in her car and getting so angry, she found a police officer knocking on the, on the window. Her car opened the window. So she opened the window. He said, ma'am, just get out of the car. I just, here's my license. Keep everything. Just get out of the car. She got out of the car. She put your hands on the car. And he handcuffed her and took her to his car to the police station. And then after she went to the police station, they run fingerprints on her. And he put her in a cell and then took her ID, started doing the background to check normal stuff, fingerprints and all that stuff. And then after a couple hours or, or so, he went to her cell and, ma'am, please come out. And he took her to her office and said, ma'am, I'm very, very sorry about this mistake. It's, it's been a mistake and we're very sorry. We, we apologize for what happened. I'm very sorry. 
she said, okay, you wasted my time, I was so angry. And then he told her, you know, I was just driving by in the street and I saw the car that has, you know, uh, I choose life, um, follow me to Sunday school, uh, another sticker on the back that says, what would Jesus do? And a goldfish of Christian uh, symbol. So I naturally thought, and I looked at your behavior, you're angry and you're cursing, so I naturally thought that you stole that car. So I take it to the station. And don't we do the same thing sometimes? By our behavior, we say that Christians, we are Christians, we're carrying the Bibles and we have crosses and have stickers, go to church, go to Sunday school, and then in our schools or our work or just regular life, we're not acting as Christians. I'll become a stumbling block for others. Fruitless life. We look like we're Christians. We look like the tree. But we lack the fruit as Christians. We become hypocrites. Also, the problem with a, a, a tree without fruits is hypocrisy and then become, we give ourselves false excuses sometimes. False excuse. Um, you know, okay, this is the best I can do. I'm a Christian, I'm trying hard, I read the Bible, but nothing is changing in me, what can I do? I did my part. So we try to make some excuse for ourselves, some false excuses for ourselves. You know, if you look at the tree, a fruitless tree, you know, of course the problem is not the soil, right? It's not the soil. The problem is the tree itself, not the soil. And when we, Adam, when he started blaming his wife, so we start to hang some false excuses sometimes and we fail and we try to cover our nakedness like Adam with the fig leaves, fruitless life again, we fail. We become also become self-righteous. When we have only leaves, we become self-righteous. We start judging others because we look like Christians. We judge others who are not Christians. Look at this person we're seeing and wearing what and that clothes and that. We keep making judgment on others because of our self-righteous. We think that we are good. We think that we are good. We think that we are, you know, living the true Christian life. But again, we're deceiving ourselves by just the look of becoming a Christian. Okay. So we said the problem with the fruitless life is hypocrisy. When we look, we become a stumbling block to others. We become, we give some false excuses to others. And then we also become self-righteous and start judging others. Then the question comes, how can we become or live a Christian fruitful life? How can we do that? Well, the second thing that Christ did today is he cleansed the temple. He went and all the people used to sell doves and all this stuff and money exchangers flipped their tables, kicked them out. He cleaned the temple. And this is the first lesson for us. In order for us to have fruits in our life, to change our life, we have to clean our hearts. This is the first step. We have to clean that. We clean it by repentance. We clean it by the Word of God, all the means of uh, spiritual means, communion, confessions. But we have to look at the things that sometimes look like they are fruit, lit, fruit they have fruits and clean it. And also pick on to bad trees. As Saint, uh, Shenouda said, God did not create a fruitless tree or fruits with bad trees. Even sometimes we have tree fruits, but it's bad fruits. We need to clean that also. Cleanse our heart from the bad fruits. The so-called loving or the so-called uh, giving when we give just to look good. <clears throat> Also, 
the second step is <clears throat> abiding in Christ. It's one of the means of becoming um, fruitless, uh, fruit, uh, having fruit in our life is when we abide Him, come close to Him. Um, every branch that does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, He prunes that it may bear more fruit. Coming close to Him. As we are doing this Holy Pascha week, we're coming close to Him. We're coming to the cross. We're bowing down. We, we sing in all these beautiful, wonderful hymns, long hymns. Come close to Him. Think about these hymns. Don't let that week of Pascha week go by without cleaning your heart, cleansing your heart, and just getting closer to Him. These two together will help us into having a fruit in our life and to be the glory forever and ever. We ask and entreat you, Lord God.